Praise be Jesus and Mary. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go and dig a henna into the unquenchable fire. In today's gospel from Mark chapter 9, Jesus uses very forceful language to communicate a most vital message or lesson. Namely, we must value our souls and eternal life with God in heaven above all things and to do whatever we must to reach that supreme goal. The only thing that can keep us from this ultimate goal of our existence of being with God in heaven forever is sin, specifically mortal sin, unrepentant mortal sin. And though venial sin does not separate us from God, it does harm our relationship with God, can diminish it, as it were, and if left unchecked, can lead to mortal sin. So we can never, therefore, make a truce with sin, mortal or venial, but rather be at war with it to the death. As our Lord says in the Gospels, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. Not only must we avoid sin, but the occasion of sin as much as we can. The old Baltimore Catechism defined occasion of sin as all the persons, places, and things that may easily lead us into sin. There are four kinds of occasions of sin. One, near or proximate occasions through which a person might always fall. Remote occasions through which a person might sometimes fall. Three, voluntary occasions, those that we can avoid. And fourthly, involuntary occasions, those we cannot avoid. We have to uh, avoid the occasions of sin that are near or proximate to us and voluntary. So they are occasions of sin that could easily lead us to sin and we have the ability to avoid them. The Baltimore Catechism again explains why. We are bound to avoid occasions of sin because our Lord has said, he who loves danger will perish in it. And as we are bound to avoid the loss of our souls, so we are bound to avoid the danger of their loss. The occasion is the cause of sin, and you cannot take away the evil without removing the cause. To advance in virtue and in the spiritual life, avoidance of near and voluntary occasions of sin is necessary. Failure to do so is only asking for trouble. If you play with fire, you're going to get burned sooner or later. For example, a recovering alcoholic must avoid the occasion of sin of going to the bar or liquor store. An avid gambler who doesn't know how to stop must avoid going to the casino. Someone who is gluttonous must avoid the all-you-can-eat buffets. The shopaholics should avoid you know, the, uh, the shopping centers where there's all kinds of sales. And nowadays, with the internet, one doesn't have to go anywhere, but uh, provides access to just about everything under the sun, and including many bad things, which is an occasion of sin, a huge occasion of sin for so many people, particularly with the dangers against chastity, indecency, lewdness, pornography. So if these are problems for an individual and they cannot avoid these kind of sins every time they get on the internet, then they need to get rid of the internet. Stop using the internet if that's what it takes. There are also many incitements to anger, hatred, backbiting, gossip, detraction, calumny on the internet. And so a sensible Christian who might be easily drawn into that should not expose his soul to these dangers of his own accord, but avoid them at all costs. 
there's much truth to the saying, out of sight, out of mind. It's one of the best strategies for us to avoid sin is simply to flee them. You know, St. Jerome said, I flee lest I be overcome. It's being humble and truthful, knowing our weakness. So just avoiding the occasions of sin in our lives is a major victory in the spiritual life. So identify the occasions of sin in your own life, that person, place, or thing that could influence you to sin, and make the firm decision to avoid it, flee it, and thereby spare yourselves of the worst thing in the world, sin. Praise be Jesus and Mary.